Welcome to the introduction of degenerative protein modifications, DPMs. In this video, you will understand what DPMs refer to, what are the different DPMs, some diseases that can result from DPMs, and we will be focusing on Alzheimer's disease as an example. DPMs are a class of post-translational modifications, PTMs, which is a result of either enzymatic or non-enzymatic spontaneous reactions. These non-enzymatic spontaneous reactions are usually associated with the loss of protein function. Hence, they are termed as degenerative protein modifications. In short, DPMs are a class of non-enzymatic spontaneous PTMs. Most of them are irreversible chemical modifications, and these defective proteins accumulate in tissues, eventually impairing the overall organ function. They are a natural consequence of molecular aging, and currently all known proteins are susceptible to DPMs during their lifespan. Now, we will look into what the different DPMs are. We have oxidation, nitration, deamidation, carbamylation, carbonylation, advanced glycated end products, age. For oxidation, which is the loss of electrons, they are caused by reactive oxygen species, ROS, such as superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, and free radicals. This happens during times of high oxidative stress in our bodies. It reflects an imbalance between the systemic manifestation of ROS and antioxidant defenses. Cysteine, methionine, histidine, tryptophan, and tyroxine are most susceptible to oxidation due to areas with high electron density. These high electron density areas resulted from the sulfur atoms of methionine and cysteine and the aromatic rings found in histidine, tryptophan, and tyroxine. Now, let us look at the oxidation of cysteine residue as an example. It can lead to two consequences. If the concentration of thiose is relatively high, it gets bonded with another cysteine to form a disulfide bond, causing deformation of the protein structure. Or when the concentration of thiose is low, it gets hydrolyzed by water to form a cysteine sulfonic acid, causing a breakage in the peptide backbone. The various oxidative damage promotes massive production of ROS in host cells, inflammation, and accumulation of misfolded proteins. There are at least 99 known diseases that are caused by oxidative damage. Moving on, we will look at nitration, which is the addition of NO2 group as a result of nitrosative stress. The addition of nitro is mediated by reactive nitrogen species, RNS, RNS are formed as secondary products of NO metabolism in the presence of oxidants. Here's a list of RNS such as peroxynitrite anion, a potent biological oxidant, and nitrogen dioxide. Amino acids with aromatic rings, tyrosine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, and histidine are nitrated. For our example, we'll look at tyrosine nitration. It consists of the addition of a nitro group to one of the two equivalent autocarbons of the aromatic ring. This changes tyrosine into a negatively charged hydrophilic nitrotyrosine moiety. Protein tyrosine nitration in N terminal of tau protein have been reported to induce conformational changes and molecular modifications. This promotes tangle formation in the temporal regions of Alzheimer's disease brain tissues. We'll look more into this in the later part of the video. To better understand what we've covered so far, on the physiological level, oxidants and nitrates have protective functions in our bodies, but this is only at low levels. And when our antioxidant defenses fail or unable to keep up with the overproduction of these reactive molecules, do we see all the negative effects? Amongst the DPMs, nitrations has most clearly shown to induce protein dysfunction. Accumulation of nitration products disrupts the ability of ADP synthase to synthesize ATP, delay protein degradation via ubiquitin proteasome system, leading to aggregation of defective protein in affected cell and tissues. Next, we look at deamidation, which is the removal of an amide functional group through the hydrolysis of a succinite ring intermediate. A negative charge gets introduced at the removal site. Deamidation occurs at asparagine and glutamine residues. For our example, we'll look at asparagine deamidation. First, it forms a symmetric succinite intermediate, and the symmetry of this intermediate results in two products of its hydrolysis, either an aspartate or an isoaspartate. Deamidation is a major source of protein instability and damage. It leads to truncation, oligomerization, 
isomerization, which is the same chemical formula, just different arrangement, or racemization, which is changing of an L form to a D form. Next, we'll look at carbonylation, which is the addition of carbon monoxide into lysine, arginine, and proline residues, as you will see in the diagram below. Next, we'll look at carbamylation, which is the addition of isocyanic acid to specific lysine, arginine, and cysteine residues. It is a result of ROS production, and it leads to uremia toxicity in end-stage renal disease. It is also implicated in inflammation, arteriogenesis, and smoke-induced chronic diseases. The following diagram shows how isocyanic acid is added to the peptide. Lastly, we come to the advanced glycated end products, H which is the non-enzymatic attachment of sugar moieties to protein. Proteins rich in lysine residues are prone to accumulation of glycation. They are implicated in diabetes, atherosclerosis, chronic renal failure, and Alzheimer's disease. Now, let us look at how H is formed. First, we have a protein with free amino group. A highly reactive aldehyde group of glucose interacts with these amino groups on the proteins creating a shift base. It then spontaneously rearranges itself into an Amadoris product, whereby the hydrogen atom from the hydroxyl group adjacent to the carbon-nitrogen double bond moves to bond to the nitrogen, leaving a ketone. In addition, a variety of highly reactive carbonyl intermediates can be formed by glucose or shift base or Amadoris product auto-oxidation, which can react again with free amino groups to form H products. These H products have been found to be highly deleterious to the integrity and function of blood vessel walls. One way is purely mechanical dysfunction caused by H cross bridges among vessel wall macromolecules. Its accumulation can also cause circulating blood vessels to adhere to the vessel wall. Non-mechanical source of damage is the perturbation of cellular function through binding to a variety of receptors that have been identified on various cell types, including macrophages, endothelial cells, move muscle cells, renal and neuronal cells. Protein undergoes non-enzymatic modifications such as oxidation, carbamylation and glycation to become a modified protein. Such proteins are normally targeted for degradation by proteosome, endosome, lysosome or autophage. However, some misfolded proteins which are able to evade the defense mechanisms and are not destroyed. These misfolded proteins accumulates and in high concentration causes inflammation as well as cellular toxicity. All this leads to the onset of neurodegenerative diseases. There are many neurodegenerative diseases. To name a few, we have Parkinson's disease characterized by impaired movement and myotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, characterized by loss of muscle control. Huntington disease, which affects muscle coordination, and lastly, Alzheimer's disease. We will now explain more on Alzheimer's disease and the degenerative protein modification that causes it. Alzheimer's disease is a chronic neurodegenerative disease that progresses slowly but worsens over time. This disease accounts for 60 to 70 percent of dementia cases and commonly begins in people over 65 years of age. In early stages of Alzheimer's, patients have trouble remembering recent events, also known as short-term memory loss. As the disease progresses, patients might face difficulties in language, orientation, heavy mood swings, as well as caring for themselves. Pathologically, Alzheimer's is characterized by the formation of neurofibrillary tangles and amyloid plaques comprising of modified tau and amyloid beta protein, respectively. Tau is a microtubule associated protein that is encoded on chromosome 17. This is a tau gene. The gene product undergoes alternative splicing to give six canonical isoforms containing 0, 1, or 2 N terminal inserts and either 3 or 4 microtubule binding repeats. However, in Alzheimer's, all tau isoforms consist of neurofil threads, neuritic plugs, and neurofibrillary tangles caused from protein misfolding. The aggregation of tau into fibrillar structures is influenced by various post-translational modifications, namely phosphorylation and nitration. Nitration in tyrosine side chains in tau protein is a random pathological event in which reactive nitrogen and oxygen species thought to be generated from peroxynitrite nitrite induces nitrative and oxidative protein modifications. 
reaction of peroxy nitride with tau protein can lead to the formation of 3 nitrotyrosine or higher order aggregates by oxidation addition of 2 tyrosyl radicals to form 3 3 dityrosine crosslinked proteins. These proteins come together to form small soluble oligomer and subsequently large insoluble tau oligomer that forms neurofibrillary tangles in a neuron. Tau loses its function in promoting assembly and stabilizing microtubules and gains toxic function whereby pathological tau sequesters normal tau and causes inhibition and disruption of microtubules. This diagram shows how a normal neuron and a neuron with fibrillary tangles look like. Next, amyloid beta peptide is a short peptide that is an abnormal proteolytic byproduct of amyloid precursor protein, APP, whose function is thought to be involved in neurodevelopment. Amyloid beta monomers are soluble and contain short regions of beta sheet and polyproline helix secondary structures in solution, but alpha helical structures in membranes. In high concentration, the amyloid beta monomers undergo conformational change to form toxic oligomers, which have a beta sheet rich tertiary structure that aggregates to form amyloid fibrils. The fibrils deposit outside neurons in dense formation known as senile or neuritic plaques. The amyloid plaques are potent synaptotoxins and are able to block proteasome function, inhibit mitochondrial activity, alter intracellular calcium concentration, and stimulate inflammatory processes. Synaptotoxins and a change in intracellular calcium concentration in neurons prevents the neurons from communicating efficiently with neighboring neurons, hence leading to neurodegenerative diseases. Inhibition of mitochondrial activity prevents neurons from generating ATP, depriving it of energy required for cellular processes. This is a comparison between a healthy brain and an Alzheimer's patient's brain. Relative to a healthy individual's brain, Alzheimer's patient's brain is characterized by the loss of neurons and synapses in the cerebral cortex as well as certain subcortical regions. This loss results in an atrophy of affected regions such as degeneration in the temporal and parietal lobes as well as the frontal cortex. Now, you may ask how are we able to detect and study the degenerative protein modifications? The answer is by using mass spectrometry-based proteomics. There are two approaches to this, the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach. In the top-down approach, intact proteins are purified and ran through tender mass spectrophotometry. Protein modifications can then be detected by measuring mass changes in precursor ion and resulting fragments. While it is a reliable method, current technological limits is unable to fragment and analyze large protein ions efficiently. In contrast, the bottom-up approach uses proteolytically digested proteins peptides prior to analysis by tandem mass spectrometry. It is the current method of choice for most proteomic studies. This technique is otherwise known as shotgun proteomics. Information about the constituent proteins of the sample are reconstructed from individually identified fragment peptides. Post-translational modifications can be identified through bioinformatics analysis. However, the downside of this approach is that peptides formed from digestion with trypsin might be too short for robust characterization.